Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about um, why every dungeon master should make sure to see Wes Anderson's Asteroid City and how the activities he's doing in this film is creating a meaningful, narr meaningful, significant, purposeful narrative, which is exactly what Podium Dungeon Masters are doing and how our, our activities are overlapping and we should be watching each other. I, I definitely think, and also I want to be clear, I think Wes Anderson should be watching Dungeon Masters as well. We, we, we both have something to teach each other. So let's talk about this, okay? So first of all, why should you be watching uh, this, this film? Well, one, it is an exploration of life and what our life here on this earth is and what it means, right? That's exactly what Podium Dungeon Mastering is about. Not Dungeon Mastering, Podium Dungeon Mastering. Gold, silver, bronze winning, metal, Dungeon Masters, the top 300 people in the world. If you want to figure, if you want to have fun with Dungeons and Dragons and you want to cut goblins in half, shove over. This ain't the place for you. I got nothing for you here, right? That's not what we're talking about, okay? If you want to use Dungeons and Dragons to explore life, that is shown very clearly in Wes Anderson's Asteroid City. So, um, the Wes Anderson's Asteroid City uh, is one of the one of the entity elements is these stargazers. So the stargazers are high school students, all who are geniuses, who have been gathered at this special location to do a, to present a science project to a benefactor, which is literally the U.S. military. Right? And they're saying, "Hey, we're going to give you a you know we're going to give you a full scholarship. You'll be able to go to any school you want to, but you're going to present." Your, your science projects to us. And then, of course, the, the military is, they're owning these, right? They're saying, oh, great, thanks for showing us this. We're going to build it, or we're going to ignore it, right? Like, And one of the kids literally, uh, you know, uh, builds a death ray, right? And they immediately, you know, take it in, and you know it's going to be created, right? But one of the, one of the um, so there are these different, uh, so there are these different children, and uh, high schoolers, not children, high schoolers. So I'd say a young adult, right? And they are presenting, they are building these these projects and presenting these projects. <coughs> and one of the geniuses uh, who actually uh, interacts with um, Sophia, Sophia Lillis is Cookie Trooper. I love that name, Cookie Trooper, right? So Wes Anderson couldn't say Girl Scout, right? So he's like Cookie Trooper. That is the most. And again. As dungeon masters, we name, we categorize, we box, we define the world, right? And so Wes Anderson is defining, you know, is drawing this. He's saying, "What is a Girl Scout? It's she's a cookie trooper, right? Like her, the greatest meaning she has is to sell cookies. That's what this whole thing is about." And boy, at this point, dead on, right? Like that's and that's powerful. And again, that's a that's a definition. That is a I'm naming this. I'm categorizing this. I'm putting the box around it, cookie trooper, right? But this this other character, uh, one of the other geniuses, is the darer, right? He's constantly so he creates a he, he creates an experiment, and actually his experiment was let me think what go through what they were. Um, one of them created a botanical accelerator, and then one of them uh, had an experiment that could um, transmit an image onto the moon. One of them was a death ray. Um, and then there were like at least, and then Sophia Lillis's one, there were two that were not really rememberable. And the, the darer was one, it was one, it was a loser. It did not win the, um, the uh, project. And it was unlikely that the, um, it did not win the scholarship. And it was unlikely that it was going to be reproduced by the military, right? But this kid was there and his parent was there. And he was constantly going around and saying, Hey, and he was a genius, and he had this brilliant project. Sorry, I can't remember which one it was. Uh, and and he was saying, um, and he, you know, and he was going around and saying he would like climb. He, at one point, he climbs off on top of a roof of a small house. It's only about ten feet down, and he says, "Do you dare me to jump off the roof?" And he says it to the other four genius uh, high schoolers, right? And none of them do. And he says, "It's an experiment," and then he jumps off the. Roof. And he does this throughout the film. And finally, his father, who is with uh, Steve Carroll's character, 
um, who is buying real estate from a vending machine. That's not a joke. Welcome to Anderson, Wes Anderson's films, which uh, which actually are pretty innovative, which are incredibly innovative, right? Um, he, his father finally says, why? Why do you continue to ask us to dare you? Why does everything you do have to be witnessed, right? And there's this scene, you know, because Wes Anderson's films are a exploration of life, why we live life, how we should live life, what are the catalysts and who are the catalysts in this world, the people who, whose actions will matter, right, the people whose actions will be connected to meaning, purpose, significance, right, so what, so he says, oh, and he says, oh, you know, and he just stops, right, because his father, he is a genius, his father is, does not care for him, does not care about him. Um, but is but is engaged with his education I, I think so that he will be independent right so that the child will not have to go back and rely on the father right so so it's not a caring you know it's not a, a loving caring desire for him a strong education it's a, it's a concern that if the kid does not have a strong education that he will still be relying on the parent right so the father asks him this question, and the character says something profound. He says, I ask people to dare to dare me. I ask people to witness these experiments I do because I'm worried that if I don't, if I am not actively pursuing, engaging people to look at me, my existence will not be acknowledged. That is powerful. And that is what your job is as a Dungeons and Dragons, as a Dungeons and Dragons dungeon master. And that is what you are doing every single week, in my humble opinion. You are saying to that person, I see you. I know who you are. You are a person who is not happy with one identity. You want many identities. You are pursuing manifold sentience. You are pursuing the, the idea that everything you are cannot be contained within one human mind, within one human heart. And, and everything you have to say cannot be said with one human mouth, right? You are manifold sentience, uh, or you are progressing toward manifold sentience. And I, as your dungeon master, am going to join you on that journey, right? It's powerful. It's, it's incredible, right? So it's a very powerful, very incredible thing that is happening between us. And each week, I, you, we take this for granted, right? Every single week, right? I'm in, I'm in this right now. I have an FLGS. I have a game I'm running in an FLGS. For two hours every single week, I say to four humans, I see you. I know you are seeking adventure. I know you're willing to sacrifice time at minimum. I know you desire human connection, right? You sitting there playing another four hours of Elden Ring is not enough for you. You need to be attached to story. You need to be attached to meaning. You need to be attached to purpose. And you want to connect with other humans, right? And I see you. I acknowledge you. I, I, I acknowledge your existence, right? And when you see a Wes Anderson film, he's saying... There are people who are never acknowledged for their existence. They're not seen each week, right? And we know this is true. And the reason why is uh, many nations, like uh, the UK has a minister of loneliness. There are people dying alone every year. And loneliness is a, is a plague on the British people. And it's exactly the same for the Japanese people. People dying alone with no one witnessing them, no one seeing them their existence, you know, they, they, and they, and exactly the fear that this character, um, expresses in this Wes Anderson film is right there, right there, you know, shown, right, so just be aware, like, you, that time you are spending at the table, it is so important, and it's why you cannot stream, and you cannot solo, you cannot stream Dungeons and Dragons, and you cannot solo Dungeons and Dragons if you care about being a podium dungeon master, if you care about um, being the type of dungeon master that matters, right? Not a goblin cut in half game, you know, sad sack game runner. That's not what we're talking about, right? We're talking about campaigns that matter, campaigns that will be remembered, campaigns that have impact. 
Every single word of that is my humble opinion. You've got to see Wes Anderson's uh, Asteroid City. Uh, and also, to be clear, everybody who, who, like, who panned this movie was like, it was okay. Do not understand art. Do not understand life. And, and we have arrived at a period. Watch carefully for this. We have arrived at a point where the art is revealing the reviewer. And the reviewers don't understand that. That's where we're at. I'm really, I'm really curious to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. And have a wonderful millennium.